Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me along my journey. And it's a fun journey, at least for me it is, and hopefully it is for you too. So we have a local pen group in my town, which is uh, very amazing and surprising considering the whole area probably you know, has about 10,000 people in it, but that's the nice thing. And we have m met a couple times in person. I missed the first meeting, but the second meeting I was able to make, and now we meet virtually using Zoom. So one of the members of the pen group um, said he had some pens, uh, some old pens that his family had, and he wanted to get them restored, and I said I would take a look at them, and he dropped them off a few days ago. I've let him set obviously in in my approach to social distancing and so now they're out to be looked at and I wanted to give you my first impressions so my first impression is this is a nice set of pens uh, you know you have a peerless so you have a tier three but in a really nice green kind of with some gold subtle gold striping in it you have a Parker dual fold in ivory it's the smaller size dual fold, but it's still nice, and then the resin's in pretty decent shape. You have some discoloration in the barrel. You have a Waterman's 52, which is a little bit of a mystery to me. It says 52 on the end of the barrel, but yet it has the stripe on the cap, and the cap has kind of like an interesting crown shape to it. I have to do some research to find out what that all means. And then we have a very nice uh, Schaefer balance in ivory. You've seen me restore uh, one of those in the past. So the next thing we need to do is take off the caps and just uh, just do a quick once around. So this has, you know, your your a standard amount of discoloration. You know, some gunk on it, which should come off. You know, overall not in bad shape. The lever moves and it actually feels like there's a bladder in there, but I'm going to have to obviously check that out. The cap comes off in... Yeah, over two turns, which is unusual for a vintage pen. And we'll see a classic vintage section. Appears to be out a little bit. We see a pretty nib that's been, I don't know, a lot of abuse, a lot of discoloration. I don't know whether that nib is salvageable, but it's not a branded nib, so we'll see how what I can do if that wants to go. But there's a lot of good threads on there, which is always a good sign. So here's the Parker. You know, it's the streamlined version. There's a little bit of an angle there. You have your three bands here. Again, this puts it in the later stages of the dual folds. Trying to find the engraving on the barrel. Not to look for it a little bit later. The cap comes off in a little less than a half a turn, so that's a little bit less than usual. You see a huge nib on it. Actually looks bigger than what normally is there. And you see a section, it looks like someone's tried to take this pen apart. So that, that not a good sign. When we take off the uh, blind cap, we'll see that the uh, knob is there, the button is there, but it, it's pretty much locked. Eh, it moves a little bit, but, you know, we're going to have to get this thing open and, and see what it's like on the inside. That's going to be the real test, but so far I think these are all salvageable. Here's that interesting 52 that I'm going to have to do some research on to identify exactly what this model is. There's a little bit of gunk on the barrel. Should be able to come off. You know, the engraving's there, but with some little gunk on it, so... Yeah, your normal wear from the age. 
We'll take a look at the cap. Ah, three quarters of a turn, so that's pretty good. We see a nice section, you know, a standard number two nib that looks like it's someone's tried to work on it or it might have been bent at one time. If we look at the lever, you know, you never force it. So if it feels like there's a, an old sack in there, at least from, uh, from that test. So let's go to the balance. As we look at it, it looks, you know, it's in decent shape for the age and for the materials and, and everything else that goes on with a vintage pen. We'll look at the lever and it moves up and down easily. So my guess is there's no sack in there. Or there might, uh, it, it doesn't feel like there is a sack in there, but we'll not know that until we open it up. You know, your normal brassing. The cap comes off in just a little bit over a quarter turn, and we'll see a huge nib on it. So that's uh, interesting. That's the one thing about vintage is you never know, because there were, you know, this was a writing instrument that during its day everybody needed one and had one, so there were millions and millions of them out there, tons of repair shops. So if somebody, like, broke a nib or whatever, went into a repair shop, who knows what they may have put into that pen back in the 30s or 40s. I think by the time the 50s came around, there wasn't as much of that as there was. And then obviously you get to our time and there's, you can count them all on, you know, two hands. So that's the first view. We're going to dig into these. I'll give updates as I go through my restoration process. I'm not going to th show it in detail because we've seen I've done a video where I restored a couple pens from start to finish and it's going to be the same type of techniques I haven't changed them but if I run into interesting anomalies on these I'll show you them and obviously I'll show you the final result. Here is what I would call stage one which is the most important stage to me in restoring a vintage fountain pen. This is the Waterman's 52. This is the section came out of the barrel very easily it's a little rubber gripper, a little twist pulled right out. Inside was a dried sack. You can see the remnants of it here. The sack had been shellacked fairly well on the section, so I cleaned that up. So what are the tools that are good to use? Well, this is a, a tool that I got from, I don't know, one of the pen supplier tools, but you use it to scrape the inside of the barrel because a lot of times the dried sack sticks to the barrel. Uh, this is also nice. I picked these up as forceps so you can go in there and grab little bits and pull them out if you need to. You need a nice little bore light uh, to check the inside of the barrel, make certain everything's fine. You need a knockout block like this to remove the feed and nib from the section and it took some effort to get it out and there's a lot of dried uh, ink in here. So we're going to soak this for a while, clean up the nib, and I'll, I may do the my nib adjustment block to see if we can straighten out those tines a little bit. But I don't think uh, the way it is now, it's going to impact the writing that much. So that's stage one. We're going to skip ahead till final assembly. This is the nib out of the Waterman 52. And I've tried my best to try to realign those tines. And hopefully the camera picks it up. But the tipping material is actually bent on one of those tines. So I don't think it's going to work. This is what the nib should look like when it's in good shape. So I do have a nib that basically is identical, has the same markings on it. And... We'll try to put that one in and see if it works, but if not, we have a backup. Here we have the uh, 52 ready for reassembling. The sack has been attached, shellacked, talc coated, everything's polished and cleaned. It's ready to assemble and then ink up and write. So the Waterman's uh, 52 is reassembled, inked up, and I've been writing with it. I'm very happy with visually how this pen 
came out in the restoration. The gunk that was on here, I think, was sealing wax. And thankfully, it didn't stick. So it was very easy to remove. Well, not real easy, but without hurting the ebonite underneath of it. A little polish, a little wax. I use Canuba wax on hard rubber pens. I think it bonds well with the hard rubber. It's a natural wax. But, you know, to each their own. You know, it unscrews with a little bit less than one turn, which is great. So in my research on this pen, I've come to the conclusion it's a Franken pen. I don't think this is the original cap. I have the only thing I've been able to find that references a pen with a cap like this with a crown in that color ring. They called it a 55. Here's some examples I found. But the barrel has a 52 on the bottom. It is a 52. So does the 55 cap fit on a 52 barrel? That I'm not going to be able to tell. Maybe a viewer out there has had some experience with it. But this is the first cap like this that I've seen. As I was watching the video, I got an inspiration. So I went to my tray of Waterman caps, and much to my amazement, I found all of these caps, which have that colored ring above the clip. One of them doesn't have a clip. Of these five, two of them screw on to the 52 that I'm uh, restoring and the other three do not. None of these caps are kind of identical. They have the clips in different spots. I think the one missing a cap band, it's hard to tell, but it may have never had a cap band or the cap band could have came off, but I don't see any residue from the cap band being there. And the color of is, is pretty consistent. So if a cap band was there and came off, you would think there would be some color variation, but I'm surprised, but here you can see the variations that Waterman did with their pens. I mean, I think during the course of the year, they made changes to models, different models. They may have had different uh, factories making the pens, and each of them may have done something a little bit different. So when you're trying to restore, and I was making Franken pens for a while from my parts, and sometimes things fit together you don't expect, and sometimes things that you expect to fit together shouldn't. But... Yes, this cap seems to be popular, more popular than I thought. This nib to me came out as well as I could expect. And you can see those tines do have a tendency to get out of alignment. I'm going to have the person who owns this pen use it for a while, see if the pen nib adjusts and what they think about the writing, and then we can always... Try to adjust a nib or potentially look for another nib to fit in here. Even though, in theory, a number two nib should fit fine in a 52, they made changes to sections and feeds and things of that nature that uh, sometimes you really have to customize and find uh, you know, a number of nibs and maybe one fits better than another one. So let's see how it writes. I used Waterman's Serenity Blue. I decided on that uh, ink. Waterman's Pen, Waterman's Ink. The pen does post, the pen does post, but not very deeply, and it makes for a long pen. It's a light pen, will give you those weights, and it doesn't really change the balance much, and it's kind of secure. You know, it's not a pen that I generally would write with posted. That section's on the small side, which is kind of typical and, and very common with uh, these 52 model pens from uh, Waterman's will give you the dimensions of those sections. I mean, it's like a pencil. And that's been one of my comments about a lot of vintage pens that were made during this time frame had small sections. A lot of people were coming maybe off of quill pens back in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s, where a lot of them may have had a pencil. So they were used to kind of expected a smaller section. Today, our uh, writing styles have changed, our writing preferences have changed, and most people like a larger section, but this is certainly comfortable, and I've written with long periods of time with many 52s and have found them to be uh, quite comfortable and um, for using for long writing styles.
so as you heard this nib has some decent feedback you can feel it on the paper that is definitely almost scratchy in that direction in this direction it's not horizontal is also a little scratchy and I think it's uh, the tipping material is not balanced uh, between those uh, two tines like I said I'm going to let the end users see uh, what they like about it and then we'll potentially go through a process of adjusting it and seeing what we can do to Im improve it with light pressure and that's the other thing that's nice about these vintage pens is it it feels fine with light pressure it puts down a nice fine line and if you don't put a lot of pressure on it it's a very pleasurable writing experience but again a lot of people like to see if they'll flex and this is is this is a soft nib but it doesn't it's not really what i would call a flex nib I mean, you can get it up to about a, a broad, but it's not something I would do on a regular basis. But for normal everyday writing, for note taking, for an everyday carry, this pen would be quite satisfying. And you can see I hold it kind of up here by the threads uh, away from that very small part of the section, and that's comfortable for me. So that's the end of this restoration. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of time to do the other three pens, and uh, I may go into more detail on those as I get them done, but I just wanted to put this one together for your viewing enjoyment and something to amuse yourself while you're shut in. And uh, this is probably going to be going on for a while, so find things that you can enjoy doing inside, and hopefully... By the time we are again socializing, we'll have millions of stories that we're going to be able to tell each other about how I survived. And that's the important part. Uh, right now we have to focus on, on survival. So find a pen. Enjoy writing with it. Write some letters. So this is the end of this video. We're going to say bye until the next video. And I can enjoy writing with this pen.